The Jared Dillion Show. I'm Jared Dillion. This is The Jared Dillion Show. Welcome. We are talking about why stocks are vanishing off the face of the earth. If you want to call to talk about your money, please call 844-305-7800. That's 844-305-7800. This is The Jared Dillion Show. You can also go to my website, which is jareddillionmoney.com, or you can follow me on Twitter at, at Daily Dirt Nap. And I'm not kidding. Stocks are disappearing off the face of the earth. They're going extinct. They are an endangered species. Stocks are disappearing. Not making that up. So about 20 years ago in 1999, we had about 7,500 stocks, and now we have about 3,000. Does that sound like a problem? Does that sound like a concern? I think that's a concern. Maybe it's more like 3,500, but it's, it's, it's dropped by more than 50%. That's no good. So the question is why? Why, why, why? Why are stocks disappearing? And you can point to a bunch of things. First of all, just mergers and acquisitions. You know, one company buys another company. There used to be two companies, now there's one company. So that's part of it. And some companies go bankrupt, and you're supposed to have IPOs. You're supposed to have new companies, but aha, that's the part that hasn't been happening. So we passed this piece of regulation, very smart of us, in 2002, called Sarbanes-Oxley. And the purpose of Sarbanes-Oxley was to prevent accounting fraud. And back then you had companies like HealthSouth, and Enron and WorldCom that had fraudulent accounting practices and a lot of common stockholders lost money in those frauds, which propelled the U.S. Congress to pass Sarbanes-Oxley, which made it a lot tougher, put in more stringent accounting standards, made it tougher for companies to falsify their uh, accounting numbers. And that, honestly was the most successful legislation of all time. It was. It succeeded in doing exactly what it set out to do. Since then, there have been no accounting frauds. And by the way, one aspect of uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, which is a bit underappreciated, is the idea that the CEO must sign off on every quarterly earnings report under threat of criminal punishment if the numbers are bad. Criminal punishment, like go to jail, prison. So that has had a remarkable deterrent effect on accounting frauds. There just hasn't been any, to my knowledge. There's been none. Now, Sarbanes-Oxley has been successful in preventing accounting frauds. It has been successful in other things, too, which is making it really, really expensive for companies to go public. Very expensive. And so we've had fewer IPOs over the last uh, 17 years. Uh, IPOs just dropped off a cliff. So once again, we have companies disappearing through M&A, companies disappearing just through death of companies, bankruptcies, but we haven't had any new companies. And over the course of the last 17 years, the number of stocks has been cut by more than 50%. So we we have just like three plus thousand stocks left, which is nuts, which is nuts. And nobody wants to be a public company anymore because being a public company is a huge hassle. First of all, you have to publish these quarterly numbers and annual numbers, and you have all these Wall Street analysts which are dissecting them and telling you how to do your job. And you have all these journalists and you have everybody on Twitter. And every time you have an earnings report, like it's just what's who who want who needs this? You know, I mean, Facebook wanted to stay private forever. And there used to be an SEC rule that if you had 500 investors or more, then you were forced to go public. And that's what happened to Facebook. They were forced to go public. They had about a 20 billion dollar market cap. And if, if it was up to them, they would have stayed a private company. Nobody wants to go public anymore. The only motivation for going public these days is a liquidity event. And what I mean by that is so insiders can sell their stock, and that's basically it. So it's not access to capital because basically you can get capital in the private markets these days. So there's no reason to do it in the public markets. And yeah. So, and this is going to continue. More and more companies see the advantages of remaining private, they'll be private. 
And if all the companies are private, then how do you invest in them? And the answer is you can't. You, the average investor, cannot invest in these companies. You can't unless venture capital and private equity funds open to retail investors, which they might someday. But, you know, VC and PE funds are not really the best vehicles for you to be investing in. They have a huge amount of fees. And I really don't understand the fuzzy math behind their returns. So the other consequence of all these disappearing stocks is that the stocks that are left over are overanalyzed. Everybody, the whole world is looking at 3,000 stocks. And it's, the markets have become very efficient. It's become very difficult, almost impossible to make money. You have no edge whatsoever looking at the same 3,000 stocks as everybody else. And that's one reason why investors want to invest in private companies, not public companies, because it's less e efficient. Anybody can buy the stock of a public company. You can. Even fractional shares nowadays, which we talked about. Fractional shares. And that is the beauty of it. But to invest in venture capital or private equity, you need to be an accredited investor, which means you need to make $200,000 in a year and or have a net worth of $1 million. Not everybody can do that. Um, and VC and PE funds have all kinds of fees, and everybody likes to talk about how fees are a drag on return. So I don't see how this is better, and it's not better. 2019, we are going backwards. 2019 is worse than 2002. It was better back then. And I'm not just being nostalgic. I'm not just, you know, old man yells at cloud. Like, I'm serious. It was better back then. 7,000 stocks, and we didn't have any of this nonsense. So, you know, it seems like I, I turn on CNBC every once in a while. It seems like every time I turn on CNBC, they're talking about Apple or Amazon. That's all they talk about is Apple and Amazon. How many times can you talk about Apple and Amazon. We are staring at the same stocks all the time. And by the way, this isn't the case with bonds, which is one of the reasons that I'm just like, you know, I can't stop talking about bonds because there's tens of thousands of bonds. Tens of thousands. And the bond market is much less efficient. And also, if you had any idea of the kind of math and computers that was going into trading stocks, you would probably not want to invest in the stock market ever again. There's a hedge fund called Renaissance Technologies. It's out in Long Island near Stony Brook University. They make like 70% a year. They only have $8 billion in capital. They return billions of dollars of capital every year. The guy who runs it, Jim Simons, he takes home a couple bill a year. There's the town where the hedge fund is, is full of billionaires, and this is a hedge fund that employs math and computer science to suck money out of the market, and there is none left for you. And there's only 3,000 stocks. And that's not the only quant fund. There's a whole bunch of quant funds, and they're all good. And they're all sucking money out of the market, and there is none left for you. If that is depressing, I mean, your only antidote to this, your only antidote is to buy and hold forever. That's it. I'm Jared Dillian. This is The Jared Dillian Show.